Mission Believe Rise Again Warrior Series Book One Written by USA Today best selling author Stacy Eaton Narrated by Ryan Clark Published by Night Wolf Novels My body ached from being out in the cold, but I trudged on slowly. I knew there was a side door somewhere, and that was my goal. I never used a front door if I didn't have to. Too many people paused in what they were doing to stare at me as I walked awkwardly past. I should be able to hold my head high and give everyone the middle finger as they twisted a lip at my scar or the way I walked, especially those who instantly looked revolted and glanced quickly away as if my face disgusted them. But I'd been brought up with better manners. I'd gotten these scars for them. Didn't they know how much freedom fucking cost? Most people didn't. Okay, so maybe it wasn't most people but more like many people. Many, many people. There was a vast number of the population that believed that because they were born in the United States, they were entitled to their freedom. To me, it was a privilege, and one you had to earn. Where was the entitlement for the 7,000 military personnel that died in the War on Terror, or whatever name it had been changed to? I'd lost count, and there had been quite a few variations since 2011. As I came around the corner, I saw a woman walking quickly ahead of me in high heels, trying to make herself as small as she could as she pushed into the wind. The memory of doing that myself, for other reasons, flashed through my mind as I blinked against the brutal cold blast. Not as bad as sand, but still uncomfortable as hell. I caught up to her at the door as she stared at it. Problem? She stiffened and twirled around with a look of alarm in her pretty face. Yeah, my fault for causing that. I sounded gruffer than I intended. I gave her a wide berth as I stepped around her to check the door for myself. Not that I didn't believe her, but the cold could make things stick. Despite my best efforts, it didn't budge. I began to bang on the door because I sure as hell wasn't about to walk all the way around to the front. Nope, I was already uncomfortable, and I had hours to go before I could pass out in front of the television. She rushed away as if she was being chased by the enemy and I watched her go as I banged on the cold metal again. I'd only gotten a peek at her in the shadowed doorway, but it was enough to know that she was a beautiful woman. A woman that should not be walking alone on a cold night in the city. Where was her husband? Not that she had to have a husband, but maybe she had a boyfriend or a string of them. Who knew? And why the hell did I care? The door popped open as she reached the corner, and I called out to her, but she disappeared around the structure and out of sight. Probably better, I surmised. The last thing I needed was to witness another beautiful woman turn away in horror at the scar on my face when she saw it in the light. A few years ago, I would have had almost any woman I wanted eating out of the palm of my hand. Between the looks that I had been born with, my status in the military, and the money my family had, I'd never lacked in the dating department. I exhaled as I removed my overcoat and found a place to store it in the kitchen. There was no way I was staying for this whole thing, and I wanted to be able to easily slip out without my father being the wiser. I took a few seconds to check out what was happening in the kitchen. Many of the staff glanced my way, but as usual, they quickly shifted their gazes in another direction. I should have been used to that by now, but I wasn't. It had only been 15 months since it had happened, and for the first three, I had been laid up in a hospital bed. Another eight months of physical therapy from home and the last four months trying to hide from the world and find my new normal as I worked on an idea. It wasn't like I didn't do anything. I did work. In fact, I worked my ass off for my father's company, and I enjoyed what I did immensely. I just wanted to do it from home and not have to go out in public. I had even recently been working hard on my own proposal with the hopes of bringing it to my father tomorrow. Well, maybe tomorrow. The only time I ever did feel comfortable outside of the house was when I was at the veterans' rehab facility. There, no one looked at me funny or shied away from me. In fact, most people locked gazes with me and called me by my rank if they knew it. They gave me the honor I deserved for having been wounded in battle. Shit, it didn't even have to do with being injured. They carried the same mental scars that I carried. It connected us in ways people couldn't understand. The war in which we had fought was sometimes unknown to us. The lines had blurred on why we were there and what we were doing at times. That hadn't mattered to any of us, though. We'd sworn an oath, and that oath required us to do what we were told. Immediately, that oath began to play out in my head. I do solemnly swear 
that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me, according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God.